paying attention to details, especially in a time of war, can make all the difference in the world. In today's case, it's a note that made that difference. More specifically, an unread message that led to a crucial victory for George Washington and the 13 colonies in revolt. Hi, my name is Sebastian, you're watching Mistakes That Changed the World. The general revolt of the British colonists had begun with a series of small successes. When these victories failed to bring about the repeal of the Coercive Act, the Stamp Act, the quartering of troops and the takeover of the courts by the British Parliament, the Americans' demand for rights then turned into a demand for independence. But as the Continental Congress approved its Declaration of Independence in July 1776, the tides had started to turn. On July 4th, the first 10,000 of 30,000 seasoned soldiers were brought to New York by the Royal Navy. These veterans were the Redcoats who had conquered India, parts of China, much of Africa and the rest of the British Empire. Lord Howe and his experienced professional soldiers quickly won three battles and pushed Washington's army away from the largest and most important city in the colony. Washington was forced to retreat from New York and then again from New Jersey. His army was battered and, to make matters worse, supplies were running low. Only the coming of cold weather forced Howe into winter quarters and allowed the rebels to take refuge in an improvised camp at Valley Forge in Pennsylvania. Many of the American soldiers at Valley Forge had enlisted after Washington captured Boston the previous spring. But after months of defeats and retreats, their morale was low. Desertions were becoming a problem, and they were hard to stop. The risk to desert from a rebel army that was so close to total defeat seemed negligible, especially when compared to the risk of staying and then be punished by the victorious crown. No one wants to support a loser. The finances of the revolution were also risking some harsh penalties, such as the confiscation of their property, prison and even the gallows. That price was too high when defeat seemed almost certain. So the funds and credits of the revolution were disappearing fast. The soldiers at Valley Forge were left with nothing. No food, no money, no clothes. The British, on the other hand, were sitting comfortably in cozy and warm homes in the nearby towns. They were so confident that they expected there'd be no more fighting come spring. What remained of the small army of the colonists would probably disband. They were almost right. This is most likely what would have happened if one of the most experienced British officers had not offered the colonists a victory on a platter that restored their morale and actually changed the course of the war. Back then, there was no group more despised than the Hessian regiments. They were used as plunderers, which meant they stole whatever they needed, a tactic often used in European wars. These German soldiers weren't very communicative either, they spoke very little English. Unable to communicate, they showed no mercy for the rebels and often didn't even bother to determine if someone was a royalist or a rebel before attacking them. Hessians are today often called mercenaries, but in reality they were auxiliaries, soldiers hired out to a foreign party by their own government. They came from Hanover, like King George III of England by the way. Thus, they were German ethnics, not British, and additionally, they were not well paid. These soldiers were practically their own masters, but they were not true mercenaries. Back to our story. Washington desperately needed a victory, but no one was fighting at that time in the middle of winter. However, on the other side of the river were the winter garrisons of the hated Hessian soldiers. A victory against them would have had a double effect. We often hear how Washington crossed the Delaware River through the ice flows, taking the Hessians by surprise, and in retrospect, it would seem that the victorious outcome on the American side was inevitable. That's actually very far from the truth. In reality, the plan was for two groups of American soldiers to attack the opposite bank of the river. The others were unable to cross at all. The success of Washington's attack relied on 2,400 demoralized men, some poorly armed and partially trained, 
against almost 1,500 experienced, well-fed soldiers who in fact had the upper hand being on well-prepared defensive positions. The only advantage the revolutionaries had was the element of surprise. To make sure their attack remained hidden, the crossing of the river was made at night. The problem was that the darkness and the terrible coat that hid them from the enemy's eyes also slowed down their crossing. On December 26th, instead of reaching Trenton to attack at dawn, the Americans were still marching towards the Hessians. And they were discovered. You see, not all locals were on the side of the rebels. In fact, at the time, many were still loyal to the British crown. As the army advanced down the road to Trenton in the early hours of the morning, a loyalist farmer realized who they were and ran to warn Hessian commander, Colonel Johann Rahl. The farmer reached the colonel's door, but was stopped by the guard, who would not be persuaded in any way to let him in. According to legend, the colonel was deep in a game of chess or cards and had ordered not to be disturbed. So the farmer had no choice but to quickly scribble a note to the colonel. The note did reach him, but it was written in English. Instead of calling a translator so early and abandoning his game, the colonel made what turned out to be the mistake of his life. He stuffed the unread note in his pocket, and from that point on, the victory of the Americans was inevitable. Washington's 2,400 rebels took the Hessians by complete surprise. Many of them were sleeping, and most were hungover or still drunk from the Christmas party the previous evening. For every four wounded and no dead, Washington's army killed 22 Hessians, wounded 94, and took nearly 1,000 prisoners. The rest of the 400 German soldiers scattered through the surrounding villages. As important as the victory was, even more vital was the fact that Washington captured all the food, clothing and supplies of the well-equipped British regiment. Of course, it's hard to say what could have happened if Raoul had bothered to read the farmer's note. But it isn't far-fetched to assume that the well-trained Hessians would have easily repelled any attack by the rebels. Another defeat, coupled with the expiration of military service for many of his men, would have simply destroyed Washington's army. The War of Independence might have ended with the victory for Lord Howe, and thus America today would most likely still be a British possession. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. Leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. I do hope to see you next time. Bye.